Yes, you can curse. Everyone else can curse. I won't curse. It's just going to be hate spam. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Jordan Foise. Oh my God. Welcome to uh, Comedy at the Markham House, everyone. I was recently walking around my neighborhood and I saw a poster and it said, uh, lost my pet ferret. And I was like, first off, man, your ferret isn't lost. The ferret that you trapped in your apartment escaped. Like that's a different, that's not your ferret, man. That's a ferret. There's a big, and he had a picture of a ferret. Like, I don't even know if it was his. Like, why do you have a picture? It's just a waste of ink. Like, I was going to see a ferret running around. I'm like, oh, there, oh, wait. Is that his ferret or is that just, is that another ferret? Maybe that's someone's pet ferret and he just let it out to go to the washroom. Or maybe it's a long squirrel. I don't know. And the worst part about the whole thing was he said, if you see it very carefully, capture it, and give me a call. <laughs> Fuck you, man. You, what? Here's the thing, if I catch a ferret, that's my ferret now, like that's, <laughs> I'm not gonna give a ferret back once I capture it. <laughs> 2016, you pumped? You excited? No, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> What are you guys all looking forward to in the new year? Not much. Uh, I'm looking forward uh, to uh, the festive special coming back to Swish LA. It's going to be a long wait, but <laughs> I bought a calendar. I'm next in the days off. I'm going to miss it. It's going to be a long. <laughs> I mean, you get that quarter chicken dinner, you're already winning, but festive special time comes around. There's all sorts of treats in there, right? Get the stuff in, the cranberry sauce, finish that meal up, got the chocolates waiting for you at the end. <laughs> Used to be a Toblerone. I don't know what happened. I wish <laughs> I wish I knew. You get the Lindors now, those aren't bad. You know? Finish your meal, pop the Lindors open, find the dark chocolate, throw that in the garbage. I don't fucking think so. <laughs> not this time, not ever, dark chocolate. Go fuck yourself. I don't need my chocolate tasting like medicine, thanks. <laughs> it's not what I'm here for. <laughs> you gotta give it up to Swish LA, man. You gotta. Been in the game a long time. Only people, only people who thought that they could improve on gravy. <laughs> and they did. They figured it out. That's huge. They took gravy on and won. Chalet sauce is better than gravy. I don't have time to argue with you people, okay? That's the truth. You can dip any damn thing in chalet sauce. <laughs> you can drink that shit at the end if you want. No one will judge you. We all get it. You can't leave any chalet sauce behind. I used to work for a guy who drank it probably more than you should have. <laughs> you know? Gets to a point where you're like, well, that's not a drink. Like, we'd get Swiss chalet lunches at, at work every now and again, and then uh, the next day with the leftover chalet sauce, he'd take it and he'd pour it into this big, giant, green, oversized coffee mug, and then he'd get a straw, and he'd just walk around slurping chalet sauce through the straw, and then he would tell me what to do. So, <laughs> it was a rough time, rough time in my life. It's hard to take orders from a guy drinking gravy right in front of you, right? <laughs> Through a straw. <laughs> but that's the self-storage industry for you, you know? That's <laughs> I paid my dues and I got out. <laughs> it's been an exciting uh, year for me. I got married recently. Um, thank you. Uh, it's fun. I'm, I'm Jewish. My wife is Palestinian. Exactly. It was a really small wedding, you guys. Really <laughs> tiny. Um, it was just me, her, and a UN peacekeeper. That was <laughs> the whole thing. It was a good time. We want to move to New York. That's our plan. We want to move to New York. And we went to see this lawyer. And the lawyer was like, 
I just have to ask you guys, is this a marriage of convenience? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Busted, lady, you got me. Oh my God, my big plan to get into America is to marry a Canadian Palestinian woman. <laughs> Hop right over that border, you know. <laughs> Alienate both of our families. This is literally the most convenient thing I have ever done. <laughs> I'm not the coolest person, you guys. Uh, I've, I've never been especially cool when I was a kid. I once shoplifted a thesaurus. <laughs> but then I felt so guilty, so remorseful, so shameful, so sorry I <laughs> brought it back. <laughs> I wasn't like a tough kid. I wasn't like afraid of like monsters or ghosts or the boogeyman. Um, but I wasn't tough. I was Jewish, right? And, uh, and, and when you grow up Jewish, it's just like really hard to be afraid of the boogeyman when your parents have told you about the Nazis. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like really... <laughs> There's just no comparison at all, you know? Like, there's no victims of the Boogeyman Memorial Museum. <laughs> no one's grandmother has gone missing on account of the Boogeyman. Also this, I think the Boogeyman was probably Jewish. I think, I think Boogeyman is a Jewish name. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's pronounced Boogeyman. I think it's, I think his full name was Joshua Boogeyman and <laughs> You just made some poor life choices. Um, but when you, when you grow up Jewish, you learn about the Holocaust when you're really young. Like, it's a lot as an adult to wrap your head around, but, like, as a child, it's really a lot. Like, you learn about it at, like, 9, 10 years old, and the way that it goes down is so crazy, right? Because your parents are like, oh, Jess, so there were these Nazis, and, and what they wanted to do was get rid of all of the Jews. And around the same time, that's when they're like, oh, by the way, you're Jewish. And you're like, What? <laughs> And they're like, yeah, what they did was they had these camps that were just for murder. And this summer, we're going to send you to camp <laughs> with just Jews. <laughs> and you're like, are you even my real parents? Do you love me? <laughs> like, what is happening? My name is Arthur, and indeed, I'm, I'm amazing. And uh, no, I am. You guys are going to have a great time. It's going to be possibly mind-blowing and you're gonna your lives are gonna change after this evening um, no most of you have noticed a bit of an accent as well I should explain that because people get angry if I don't I have a bit of an accent because I was born and raised in Thunder Bay Ontario Canada uh, what shut up I love Canadians all of you are like no fuck off we know what they look like I didn't even know why that was funny until I actually went to Thunder Bay. <laughs> First time in my life I stopped traffic for all the wrong reasons. Just one girl driving, they're like, Mom, you never believe what I'm looking at. They exist. Um, black, no. Um, no, I'm an immigrant to Canada. I was born and raised in a small East African country called Uganda. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with it. Uh, and I like, I like being an immigrant in this country because you learn so many things about yourself and about the country that you're in. For example, uh, there's things that I can do that most of you can't. Like, I can't get away with stuff that you... And then there's things that I can't get away with, right? Like, there's, there's things that I love. Like, I, the moment you tell Canadians you're African, the first reaction is always the same. It's always like, oh, <laughs> you're African. <laughs> I'm like, don't feel sorry for me. Feel sorry for the bastards I left behind. Like, look at me. <laughs> I'm fat, I eat well, no more malaria. Anyways, um, that's a terrible joke. If you laughed at that, you're a terrible human being. Hope you're happy with your life. I, uh, no, I, uh, I love, <laughs> I love being anyone because there's things that I, 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 like for example, there's things that I just don't understand I can get away with, right? I can say no, right? You guys are like, what are you talking about? Because Canadians, most polite, welcoming people in the world. You don't even have no in your vocabulary. You don't have it. Any one of you, a friend, coworker, family member can come up to you and say, hey, can I have both your kidneys? And you guys would be like, yeah, I guess. Um, I'm at work right now, but I have a break coming up in 15 minutes. I'll bring it. It's a good thing I brought Tupperware with me. Um, good health care. You guys can't say no, you can't, you're too polite, you can't say no, I can, I'm not one of you. <laughs> Someone will call me up and they'll be like, hey man, I'm having a potluck on Sunday, can you make it? No. 
Because a potluck is such a dumb fucking idea. A potluck is a polite way of saying, I have a nicer house than you, but I can't cook. That's all it is. And I have to make chicken in my house and carry it on the subway like some sort of loser. Just because Chris can't cook. No, go fuck yourself. But you can't say that. That's rude. That is very rude and crass. You can't say that. You have to be polite. Because when you say, you'd be like, no. And someone would be like, why? Why can't you make it? And you'd be like, oh, you said Sunday? Sunday is a religious African holiday. And I'm going to spend the whole day naked chanting to the gods. <laughs> and I can see the look in their face. They know it's bullshit, but they can't call me on it because that's racist. That is racist. You don't know where I'm from. You don't know. <laughs> and then I just stay home and watch Netflix. It's amazing. It's an amazing life. Guys, uh, when did gum ads get so damn sleazy? You know what I mean? What happened with gum ads? Gum ads used to be like, you know, they used to be about a bunch of different things, but now gum ads are only about sex, you know? Like, they're all about, like, like Dentine Ice's ad is like practice safe breath. And it's like, hey, man, there's other reasons to chew gum. Like, maybe I'm going to work high. Like, there's lots of reasons. <laughs> It's not only for banging gum. <laughs> yeah, so like I miss when gum ads were like fun and uh, like childish, you know? Like gum ads used to be like, hey, put it, put, it's gum, put it in your mouth and chew, let's have a good time, you know? <laughs> like gum ads used to be like, juicy fruit is gonna move ya. And now gum ads are like, trying to get fucked tonight, playa? <laughs> gonna need some gum. Like the craziest one, have you guys seen Bazooka Joe's new motto? Oh man, it's nuts. Bazooka Joe's new motto is Bazooka Joe gets that pussy wet. Whoa! <laughs> Bazooka Joe, I miss when you had cartoons. We still do. Ew! <laughs> Just had uh, the holidays pass. I love the holidays, I love turkey dinners, I love all that, uh, all that good stuff. We got a long wait for the next one, which is a bit of a bummer, but uh, you know, I'm still riding on Christmas dinner fumes, so it's okay for now. I love the whole shebang, you know, turkey, mashed potatoes, gravy, cranberry sauce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Although, I think it does beg the question, how did cranberries score that gig? Holiday table, every time, fucking cranberries? I think we can all agree cranberries are easily the shittiest berry out of all of them, right? Like, they're not even trying. <laughs> Bullshit weird berry. The cranberries are like the Stephen Baldwin of the berry family, you know? You're like, what the fuck are you doing, man? We like your brothers. Can't you be more like your brothers? If I had my way, cranberries, you're out. Not a berry anymore. You're just a crayon. <laughs> that sounds gross. You're gross. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Good luck. I don't need you. That would free up a spot, of course, on the berry lineup. Bring cherries in. Cherries. You did it. You're a berry now. <laughs> I've been following you all along. You've had that pit in the middle has not slowed you down a bit. You've been kicking ass. We're gonna call you cherry berries. It's gonna be adorable. <laughs> Everyone is gonna want a cherry berry. <laughs> Fucking cranberries. Off the top of my head, I can name five berries better than a cranberry. Strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries. I'm sure there's a fifth berry that's better I'm not a fucking berryologist, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> like, you go to the grocery store, there's a whole wall of cranberry juice options for you to choose from. So many. But if you look close, all it is is cranberries mixed with a different berry that actually tastes good. <laughs> and cranberries there trying to steal the credit. Pretty good juice, eh? Shut the fuck up, cranberries, okay? Grape was in there working overtime, trying to make up for your sour bullshit, so I don't know what you're bragging about. <laughs> I 
Well, strawberries, that's a berry right there. <laughs> that's a fucking berry. Give them the holiday table. It's not even about taste at this point. It's about respect. <laughs> respect the strawberry. Strawberry's been doing things cranberries could never even fucking dream of. Neapolitan ice cream? You think cranberries could jump in there and sub in? No, that would not happen. That's chocolate and vanilla. You're dealing with the big dogs now. You can't fuck around with a cranberry. <laughs> Only strawberries can do that. <laughs> cranberries are all over the or strawberries are all over the place. They're working with all the other fruits, you know, in harmony. Strawberry banana, you know, we've all had a smoothie before. We've been there. Entry level smoothie, strawberry banana. <laughs> Some ice, some milk. I don't know what's in a smoothie, but this sounds right. <laughs> Think kiwis ever would have made it mainstream without strawberries vouching for them 100% of the way? No. It's always got to be strawberry kiwi, not just kiwi. No one wants that. You're freaking people out, kiwis. <laughs> Rhubarb? <laughs> <laughs> fucking every time strawberries have to take that bullet. No one's fucking with rhubarb except strawberries. You ever had a rhubarb pie without strawberries in it? You got pranked. That's not real. That's not a real thing. You just ate a baked salad. That's pretty gross. Do we have any bisexual people here tonight? All right, Toronto, it's still early. No worries. Um, <laughs> I feel, I feel like a lot of people don't think that bisexuality is a real thing, right? I feel like people think it's this like made-up notion, like unicorns or bilingualism in Canada. <laughs> just not real. And, and here's how I know people don't think it's a real thing, right? Like when I say I'm bisexual, what they hear is, is of course I'll fuck you. Like that's <laughs> usually how that goes. I pointed right at you, sir. And uh, <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you, for, thank you for doing yes. Thank you. Sometimes people are like, ah. Sometimes, though, people are like, oh, Jess, that's not fair. You can't have all of the people. <laughs> Pick a team already. Like, what, what do they think I am? Some kind of sexual cookie monster just terrorizing the streets? Like, me no fussy. <laughs> not, no, not yummy. You know? <laughs> Stupid. I did discover something that surprised me, though, when I started dating uh, women, and, and this is what it is, you guys. Uh, size matters. <laughs> right? Yeah. And this is what I mean by it. Like, I'm the kind of girl that likes to be spooned, but I'm a lot bigger than a lot of other girls. And a while back, I picked up this, like, tiny butch, right? Just like a little butchlet. Just like a little butchlet <laughs> <laughs> with a tiny tie. And... Um, <laughs> It was cool because her role was to be the spooner, right? Uh, but when we went to sleep, it felt like I was wearing a little backpack. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I married now, and um, I mentioned sorry, sorry about that, and <laughs> or maybe not. Um, and it's interesting. Like we've been, my wife and I, we've been together for a long time. It's been uh, oh, five years almost, and we decided to keep things spicy, right? So we tried uh, role play, standard thing couples do, right? Everybody, role play. Anybody else done it? <laughs> Anyone want to shout out any role suggestions? <laughs> Polite laughter. Um, <laughs> The problem for my wife and I is that uh, she doesn't have a lot of acting range, right? <laughs> she just knows how to be like the bitchy version of like whatever the character is. <laughs> so you see the problem. Um, <laughs> we did something very simple. It was masseuse and client, right? Like no big deal, masseuse and client, very standard. I know you guys have all done it. Um, she was the client, I was a masseuse. She lay down on the bed, I left the room, I closed the door, I got into character. I was Helga. Right, from Scandinavia, obviously, <laughs> deep tissue specialist, <laughs> made a mean meatball. Like, I knew my character, right? I go into the room, I announce myself, I'm like, Helga, hello, I'm here, <laughs> whatever. And my wife turned around and she was like, oh, I'm sorry, I ordered a man. <laughs> I was like, what? That's not right. 
It's been interesting the whole way, our relationship. Really, the whole way it's been interesting. The first night that we got together, um, we were pretty drunk. It was very romantic. This guy, you know, dared us to kiss. He wanted a threesome. We went off and got married. And I just, <laughs> PSA, boys. Um, and and we, so we were drunk, and the clothes were coming off, and she stopped me and at one point, and she goes, you might see something you don't like. I know. <laughs> I was like... Like, what, did you not wax? Like, <laughs> I haven't either. We're both women. It's fine. This is like 50% of the reason we do this. <laughs> and um, <laughs> she's like, no, that, that's not what it is. Um, I was like, do you have a penis? Because that would be amazing. <laughs> she's like, no, that's, that's not it. I, I have a tattoo. And I was like, oh, it, is it a swastika? Like, what is it? <laughs> and she's like, no, that's not it. It's, a, it's the map of Israel, and it says Palestine over top in Hebrew letters. And I was like, maybe we could cover that up with a swastika. <laughs> I'm trying to become Canadian, though. I'm trying to become very Canadian, but it won't, I know it's not going to happen. I'm never going to be fully Canadian. I'll tell you why. Because all of you are lunatics. <laughs> I've been here 12 years. I've been in Canada 12 years. I've tried. I can never be as crazy as you. You know why? Because everyone was born and raised in this country, polite, welcoming, but also crazy. You know why? Because you're still surprised by winter. <laughs> How is this still happening? <laughs> You've lived your entire lives. You know exactly what's going to happen, but you pretend it's the first time it's happening. You wake up every May and you grab your sweaters and winter tires and, snow and you burn them in, in bonfires across the country. Like, we're never going to need this shit again. <laughs> and then December rolls around. You guys are like, what is happening? What is? Oh, my God. Every January, there's a pileup on the 401 because someone forgot to put their snow tires on. How is this still a thing? Winter is coming. Like, this is a thing that's going to happen every single year. Listen, at this point, when the police show up to an accident and someone didn't have their snow tires on, they should be legally allowed to shoot you in the face. Just shoot you. <laughs> Excuse me, you seem to have no snow tires on. Are you an immigrant? No, boom, we don't need you. You failed. <laughs> Most of you are thinking, that's a little extreme. <laughs> I know. But you only need to do it for one winter. That's it. That's it. The next July, all of you will be putting snow tires on. But now I live in the city, and I'm trying to meet women, and it's difficult because my lifestyle comes into play. I realize this because I don't have a car. And uh, I don't drive, so for me to date a girl, she has to live on the subway line. You have to live within a seven minute walk of a subway stop or things are not gonna work out between us. <laughs> and it has to be Blow Danforth University Young, none of that Bizarrean bullshit, okay? <laughs> you ever been talking to a girl like, oh, which part of town do you live in? She's like, oh, I live at like Steels. Steels, go fuck yourself, Steels. <laughs> Supposed to have to find a bus to come and find you? No. <laughs> Call me when you're at Bathurst and Blow or something. Don't get me wrong, I've had some success in my career, so from time to time I'll spring for a zip car, right? <laughs> you guys know Zipcar, car sharing company. People use it to run a few errands, go grocery shopping, buy, uh, go take someone to the airport. Uh, I use it to go on first dates. The problem is Zipcar does this thing where they paint the whole car with signs that say it's a zip car. <laughs> so you can't even pretend it's your own ride. And you girls in this city are very snobbish. Like I went to pick up a girl recently, she walked out of us, she's like, seriously? Zip car? I'm like, listen, we only have three hours. We don't have time for your bullshit right now. <laughs> this car needs to be back by 11. Our group on expires in an hour, so maybe. You guys have been wonderful. Thank you so much.